Hello YouTube and welcome to another update video on TSOM Craft. This update video is talking about the changes so far with TSOM Craft 3, which is the new version for 1.9.4, which will be released eventually, and it is the rewrite of the mod. So I've been programming for about a week now, uh, a couple of hours a day, and uh, well, this is where we've got to so far. Now, don't worry about GEI being messed up, yeah, that's weird, eh? That's very strange that it's chosen that order of things, but you know, it has. And you may notice that it looks quite different, most of the stuff does. Um, yes, there, there's a lot of changes, so almost all of the text has been changed to be new, stuff like that. Because, um, as I said before, it all looks really bright and colorful, which it all kind of does with the, um, not so much these, but more sort of the plates at the bottom here, and a little bit the ingots down here. Um, but it looks better, I'd say. I'd say the texture more refined than they were before, and generally better thought about. So uh, let's begin with the first thing that we want to look at, which is probably the ores. Um, I don't really have a comparison from before, but I'll just pop them down to show you. We have these have been redone. Um, so these are the ores in the mod now. Uh, we have copper, tin, lead, silver, aluminium, it's in English, I'll call it aluminium, you'd probably call it aluminium I'd imagine if you're not English, and uh, magma. So um, magma is the, uh, obviously the rarest of them, uh, I think it's rarer than diamond actually, and has many uses. Um, so the other thing that you'll notice that uh, as I hover over magma here is that these ingots all have these sort of uh, sort of extra text on them, which is different colours. I've added that sort of thing going on in here now, which I thought was pretty cool. Now I just kind of wanted to do it because it sounded like a fun idea. I don't do it for the ores, but I do do it for the blocks and the ingots and the blends here, because these are just labels metallic blend. These, to be fair, are labelled as block or whatever. The cave ingots, of course, are just labelled as the cave ingots. Um, so that's the ores that we look for. Um, and I intend to give more uses towards the lead, silver, and aluminium. Because in the previous version, aluminium particularly just didn't do anything. Silver was, in fact, I don't think silver did anything either. But um, there you go. So, uh, yeah. So currently there aren't really any recipes because I haven't got around to that yet. So the current survival thing isn't in yet. But, however, in, in the config setting, the harder survival difficulty of saying that the crafting table requires the, the long recipe, requires you to make all the cave cauldrons and stuff, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, uh, that has been changed to um, be set up so that you can craft it normally by default, and if you want to have the long start, you have to change out in the config. And I feel that's better because that after making crafting tables, you sort of feel like, that's it, sort of thing. It isn't, but it sort of feels like, okay, I've achieved my goal. And then you sort of feel a bit burnt out after that, I'd say, from my experiences with other people. Um, so it's currently set to default, so you can actually experience the rest of the mod um, without having to worry so much about the crafting table thing at the beginning. So, you know, I think that's more user friendly. Um, and if you want to make a hard mod pack that has that enabled, then you can. So there you go, uh, that's another change. Um, so, starting off, I suppose, the proper stuff is wood catalysts. Yes, these things have changed. So, of course, the same recipe as before, it's a wood catalyst. And you'll notice that there are different types of them now. Yes, there are actually different types of wood catalysts. So, if I do it here, it should actually be in the right order, I'd imagine. No, it's in the wrong order, that's fine. I'll try and put them in the right order, I think. Uh, but I just remember, I'll just grab around whatever order I feel like we're in. Uh, if we then look at the. Yeah, so we plot these down. And these are actually modeled after the default wooden planks, as you may be able to tell um, to some degree. I kind of prefer this texture to the previous one. I actually did put it in pretty much the right order, I think. No, I got um, Dark Oak in case you're wrong, but never mind. Um, so these are modeled after the default wooden plank uh, variants, sort of thing. Um, yeah, so 
that's how this works, basically. So they're kind of, I kind of like them more than the default planks, but they're obviously a bit more expensive, so it's not really a great building at times. They've, they do actually punch out instantly if I go and swell that quickly. Uh, set it to the other as well. Okay. If I just punch these out, you see they punch out instantly. I do intend to change that at some point so that they don't do that. Um, but again, this is early time, so I haven't really got around to that yet. Uh, it's more just getting the features back in, as it were. Um, but the tools are in, and their recipes do work, actually. Uh, and something that people may be interested to in know is that the wooden tools, their recipes actually match up with the rest of the items now. It was originally in there to make it cheaper, where the basically what would happen is where these logs are, where these planks are, um, there would normally be sticks there, and where the stick is, there would be a plank. But to make it the same as the other items, where the stick is here and the plank or the block form is there in the corners, um, I decided that it was actually better to have it the other way around. Though it was originally designed to be just a cheaper method of making the wooden stuff. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. So these are back to, they basically match up with the rest of the items now. Uh, and of course, another new thing is that there are now bronze and steel tools that have been added to the game. Of course, uh, another thing that you can do with Magmite is you can use it to upgrade any tool in the game to have efficiency for forging three and unbreaking three. Uh, just same with shovels. This, the, this doesn't have fortune on it, but the pickaxe does. And swords get sharpness four and unbreaking three on them. So pretty cool. That's what Magmite does for these at the moment, um, which is a nice thing. So yeah, bronze and steel tools. I think steel is slightly better than diamonds. But it requires an alloy furnace, which I haven't added yet, obviously. But it will require an alloy furnace to make. And bronze is, I think, a bit weaker than... I think it's a tiny bit weaker than iron, but it has a greater durability, um, I think. Not entirely certain uh, what I did with that. It's just about a, a bunch of numbers when you're actually doing it. And, of course, the cave wrench has got a slightly different texture. So it's kind of the same as the other one, but with like a longer handle on it, which is nice. It makes it actually sort of make sense. And so yeah, that's the basic stuff up here. Of course we've got our cave coals again. They just do their thing, they haven't got recipes yet, but they're there. Um, so the next thing that's probably important, so you're probably wondering what all of these things down here are, because, you know, these things have got weird textures on them, and in fact they've got models in them. Um, so let's look at the creative tabs here. So we've actually got three different creative tabs now to split things up into different sections. So this is the sort of generic Tison Craft stuff. Tison Craft magic stuff. This is this is where most of the stuff's happened. So I haven't detected the runestone charging bench yet. It doesn't even show up in here because of it. But it is in because we have runestones now. More than one. You have basic, cave, advanced cave, and magmite. And they do different things currently. Um, but let's go on to what we normally, what we're used to. So cave cauldrons. Yes, they're now called cave basins. And that's to match up with their new aesthetic, which if I show you right now, looks like that. Now yeah, that's pretty cool. So I built these models um, this week, which is probably what I spent most of the, t the week doing outside of coding um, for this. So if I show you, they now actually support water buckets and any potion type for filling a cave cauldron. So if I show you here quickly, well, I'll just do three, so I'll show you a potion of strength. Sure. So we've got water bucket in there. As you can see, it actually fills up a little bit. Not dynamic uh, water, but uh, you know, it's, it still fills. So it gives you the bucket back, actually. And if you use a bottle, it just gives you the bottle back. And if you use any kind of potion, it will also work as well. And of course, cave cauldron is the same as before. Seeds. You can actually use any kind of seed here. So I'll just pick out these ones because they're not the vanilla one like you're used to. But they are vanilla, but they're different. So if I use these kind of seeds, it works fine. Uh, use a bottle. Let's pick this up again. And I'll just use three bottles to get the can. Three. Like that. So these are the cave buildings, or cave basins as they're now called. Um, and this goes well with the cave evaporator, or the essence evaporator, sorry. Which is how you evaporate the bottles of essence of essence I picked up here, which of course have the the uh, blue, uh, not blue, green nature part there. It says nature on them. To tell you what kind they are, and the essence evaporator needs a new model on it, of course. 
and most of the magic stuff at the moment works the same way as before and uh, just gives you four dust per bomb. So, again, basins, just like cauldrons, upgrade the same way. I'm going to put that back down. Grab some meadow rack. And that. And we grab endstone. And you pop it down under the here and here. And by placing them down automatically, rather than you having to right click them now, they actually will change automatically if that happens. If you place one down and then put it under, you then do have to right click. But if you put it down on top of it, it will automatically change. And you also can right click on it with the item you want to change it to if you want to do it that way. So I'd like to place these grass here, put that there, do that. It doesn't consume the item, it just changes what it is because it doesn't obviously when you place it underneath. And these work the same way, so lava buckets and glowstone, and a bottle of end water and glowstone. And water goes in this tab. And water, not glowstone, blaze rod. So that, 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 that. There we are. That gives me the blue dust, and the purple one goes like so. That gives me the purple dust. Very nice. So obviously light, energy, and nature are the three dust types there are. And there's even a blue one now, this one here, really dust water, which I have some plans for. Uh, and that actually existed before. It was used to make the blue stuff or the water stuff, but I'm changing the recipe. The, the blue inlays for the um, runic tiles, which I haven't added in yet, because I, that's in crafting section, which I haven't done yet. Um, but it, it will be in that set. So the next thing we probably need to look at is uh, the new magic to base machines. Uh, as you may notice here, you don't see any energy nodes from before. There's no magic energy nodes. They're being removed from the mod. Now, I felt that they're a slight complication in themselves, because realistically, in, you're not really supposed to stay in magic stages that long, or at least if you do, it's not meant to feel that powerful. Uh, and alongside the transmutation tables, which are also gone, along with the entire system of transmutation, as you can see, there's no one saying energy value here. I'm trying to sort of change the magic stage to be sort of well, quite different to how it is, and potentially draw focus more towards rune stones when it comes to magic, and then actually have tech stage as your technology level, as it were. So magic stage now based around three machines: the derivers. Uh, well, sorry, the derivers, three tiers of deriver, the green, the blue, and the purple one. And basically, the only difference in these two, these three, is they store different amounts of energy in them. Because um, there are no transmutation tables, you don't have an infinite battery anymore as you would have done before. And there aren't any storage devices in the magic stage other than these. So the energy derivers, their other purpose is they work like furnaces. So if I put a piece of coal into one of them, like so. Now we know coal has a burn time of 16,000. Doesn't actually show in here. It has 16,000 burn time in the default Minecraft. That's the number of ticks it will burn in a furnace for. And when I right click on here, it says 16 energy. And if I put another one in, it's 32. Because its burn time is 16,000. 1600, sorry. It's 1,600. Divide it by 100, and that's the amount of energy you'll get out of fuel. So. Cave coal, for example. In fact, if I put a, um, a block of coal uh, in, which has a burn time of 10 times of coal, so I think I'm correct there. Yep, 160. Uh, in the blue one, and in the purple one, we can just do two of these against 32 again. So, how do these work? So, essentially, you just place them adjacent to whatever machine you want to power. So, let's say this magical furnace here. Now, there isn't a blue. Uh, blue, green, or purple tier of the machines anymore because when looking at it, no one ever makes the green one. Let's be honest, it has it serves no purpose because you don't always get the result item out of it and it uses a lot more energy and stuff like that. And then you have the blue one, which is sort of some people make that, but realistically, the only one that people ever made was the purple one, as far as I can see, because. It just had the least problems with it, and it's not like the purple dust was really that expensive because you just needed an ender pearl and a blaze dust and your book of knowledge at that point. So, yeah, so there's only the this tier, which is red at the moment, um, 
and probably will stay red for a while. So they exist basically. Only one tier of magic machines. So this is the furnace. And it has 32 energy in it. So it's taken all the energy out of the driver currently to fill up this. And I think if I'm correct, uh, if we grab some cobblestone, one cobblestone uses 16 energy, which is the same as one piece of coal. So smelting things requires one coal, which is my clock going again. Um, I mean, you have to think about this from a, that's really inefficient. However, however, it's instant, and that's quite important. It is, it does, it smelts instantly, and furnaces take a while to smelt. Yeah. So rather than smelting eight items over the course of 1600 ticks, which is like 80 seconds, um, it smelts one item over the course of one second, or just no seconds, I suppose, because it's instant. Um, so, you know, you've got to think about that when you're balancing this mechanic out here. Do two more in there. I'm just going to break it up. I think do two more in here. Uh, four in there. Okay, so you have, to, you have to think about that when balancing this thing out. Um, so there are also two other machines. There's the crusher, which does the same thing as before, pretty much. And the plate puller. And... Now, for anyone who's interested in the tech stage, you may remember that you needed to use the plate form in order to get the tech stage. That is changing. I'm adding an item, well, okay, a different kind of recipe that allows you to make plates using the wrench and, um, and uh, what's it called? Make this more coal. Okay, I'll just use this coal. Okay, cool. Fine. It will allow you to use the wrench and um, a bit more resource than you would normally do, and that allows you to make bronze and iron plates is the idea. So that once you want to get advanced stuff, you can you'll make an electric platformer, basically. Or you could use the platformer from the magic stage, which is more efficient, but more expensive. So the crusher turned cobblestone into um no, turned stone to cobblestone, cobblestone into gravel, and gravel into sand. And then obviously you can smell the sand into glass. As per bronze, uh, and obviously this will double rules as well. So I'll use bronze for the plate form here, and you see it makes plates as per. Same as before, pretty much. Um, again, not all the recipes are in yet, so, so these are just examples I'm giving you of the ones that I know do still work. Um, but this is the base of the new magic stage, so that's kind of how it is. The plate form and crusher look quite similar, except this has got the sort of plates there and there, and the crusher has them there and there. Middle of the platform, so and the furnace looks a bit different in general, so that's two sort of flaws to it. And this, the concept of this is basically all the energy sort of pulled into the middle here, and then it sort of just heats up whatever's down to be placed there. But I'm not good enough at rendering to actually put the items inside the block, as it were. But this is the general basis of the new magic update, uh, magic side of things uh, for now. So let's talk about the next thing. That exists. So obviously the Book of Knowledge exists, uh, it does most of the things it did before, but I can tell. The Life 1 doesn't do it, um, the Life 1's a tier 2 one, uh, it doesn't seem, it doesn't have its recipes in yet, but these are all the same. Yeah, so you can craft up to the Power 1, which is going to do something eventually. I intend to have it do something before I release this update as well, so be aware of that. Um, Right, so the next thing I want to talk about probably is runestones. They've changed a bit. So let's grab an infinite power supply or some descriptions of this and probably some of these. And we'll just pop down a uh, runestone charging bench because we don't have a texture yet. Pop it there. Grab some runestones out. So, yes, I'll grab all of them. Fine. So, runestones, they've got a new texture. They're now hexagonal rather than um, whatever they were before. And there's now four tiers of them, and they've changed a bit. So they actually store different amounts of energy. They also have over. They also have uh, tooltips saying how much they've got in them. It's been requested, and what inlay they're attuned to at the time. This being requested is not always easy to tell. You obviously can use them in your secondary hand as well as your main hand, which is cool. Um, so let's show these things off. These are the same as before, by the way. Just to let you know. So I'll grab a bunch of them just to let you see. 
give you an idea of what's going on. Okay, so let's look at the uh, basic room search stuff. But if I hold shift and right click, in fact, if I just right click once, it will pop up this information on the screen telling you how to um, use it, essentially. Uh, so if I crouch and right click, it will equip inlays from inventory. Bang. Note how it only took these two. And that's because the basic room search only has two slots in it now, as opposed to the three it used to have. And as it says here, if we hold secondary effects, which of course is the tool, uh, the uh, key bind that exists in TSO Craft, which is milk, they are by default set to Z. So I'll hold Z and right click, tuned in there is nature, and you see it updates here. Uh, so let's fill it with energy by right clicking on the charging bench here. That says it's full of energy. And nature basically just works pretty interestingly. So with the basic runestone, it's not very good. Um, not only does it use more energy than the higher tier runestones and can't store as much, its version of nature and a few other things are actually weaker. So for example, here you see it shoots a slime ball, whereas for the advanced tiers, it shoots a magma cream looking thing. It does not only more damage, but it also doesn't have gravity affecting it like this does. Yeah, so this one has gravity on it, which makes it pretty bad. So the other tier is energy, uh, which as before, uses a lot of power, but it sets it to daytime, if I can find the sun, sounds like that. So it sets it to dawn, so the sun actually moves. In theory, it sets it all the way around, so it actually becomes the next day, rather than being, but it actually um, uses quite a bit of power, so it's already out of energy pretty much on that. And each time you use it, it tells you how much energy is left, and of course you can just check here if you're not sure. But that's the basic room stuff, so I'm gonna try that away and get any there. So the cave room stone stores four, if I recall correctly. Uh, I think it does anyway. It's listed. Right, okay, interesting. Okay. So this one stores four uh, slots in it. Ah, yeah, there's a charge box. So I got nature, energy, ender, and light here. So if I show you energy, uh, ender, sorry. Ender does the same as before, shoots an ender. I then the, it teleports you to the location where it lands. Pretty cool. Light places torches as it used to do. Actually, I'll show the new nature by yeah, see it fires. The upgraded nature one that fires these magma creams that do a bit more damage and uh, do they do quite a bit more damage actually and they don't support gravity, which is nice. And of course this one stores twice as much energy, so it's generally quite useful. And just pretty ridiculous actually. Uh, if I set it, just how much energy you can use. I mean, this this will last you a little while. So this is the K room stone. This is what you're used to. And this stuff does actually work in your secondary hand. So if you want to use say, like a sword at the same time, a sword in this hand, and then you can just right click and attack, take out some things, and teleport away. You can, or you could uh, wield the nature power and then attack at range and then get up close and sort of attack with a sword like that sort of thing. You can do that and it's quite easy to do. So let's do that. Let's uh, actually clear these out so I don't do them again. Uh, yeah, so I'll just do lightning, earth, water, ice, yeah. so fire and food. So the advanced cave runestone is pretty cool as well. This one stores a bit more. This one stores six inlays in it, and the manual one stores eight, uh, it has more energy storage capacity, you don't need to do much more, uh, I won't even show the magma one, it just stores eight basically, which is, there are nine of them currently, I think, one, two, three, yeah, nine, that's right, is there? No, there's ten, okay, sorry, there's ten at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, this one stores uh, eight, this one stores six, so this is lightning, he shoots a piece of redstone that spawns lightning on it. Earth, which deals damage to mobs, but also um, breaks blocks when it hits them. And for the cave, for the basic tier, sorry, the earth can only smash blocks, I think as strong as stone, whereas after that it can break any block. So this tier can break any block. I don't think it can break bedrock, actually. That is an exception. No, it's not an exception. Never mind. I'll have to fix that. <laughs> That's interesting. 
I did not know there was a bug. Okay, that, that is actually in the previous version as well, because that part is fairly similar to my previous code, I assume. But we'll see. I think that might be in the previous version as well. So you can break bedrock with this thing, apparently. Which I did not know. But apparently you can. So the earth one's pretty cool. So you can break blocks, you can damage mobs. It's quite slow, so it's not really the best weapon to be attacking mobs with, but it is meant as a digging tool, basically. Use a little bit more energy than used. And then we've got water, which for the basic tier will make it rain, and for the advanced tier, or the cave tier, I suppose, it will not only make it rain, but if it is raining, it will stop it from raining. Uh, like that. And then there's the ice tier, which is pretty cool. Uh, it fires an ice cube, which is essentially the same as the major one, it's just fly it just flies a bit faster, basically. So it, um, and it does a bit more damage as well. Which allows you to get kills quite easily. Then we have fire, which sets things on fire. Which is pretty cool. Um, quite good, actually. It, it does about the same damage as the ice one, but also it does fire damage, so it's quite good for fighting. But it flies a bit slower and wet stuff, rather than ice being pretty much instant travel. Then we have food. Now, you guys may remember that there used to be cave jelly in this. Well, there isn't anymore. Instead, this kind of the food inlay actually just makes bacon. That's right, bacon is in the pack again, in the mod, sorry, not in the pack. It's about, it's as good as it used to be, you can't craft it anymore, uh, but instead you make it using the rune stones. Uh, so that's how that is, basically. Um, that's about it, I'd say, for this mod, this mod update video so far. Of course we've got the dust blocks, but you know, they're just sort of, they just sort of exist as their own thing. They're kind of cool, I suppose. I don't know, it depends whether you really want to use them or not for anything. Uh, I'm going to add any of the cosmetic blocks in properly, yeah. Uh, as it were. They may take me a little bit, um, and it probably will add those last, to be honest. I kind of want to get all the functionality in. So, talk about things that I'm going to be doing to come in this update. Uh, so currently I've been programming the energy pylons for the tech stage, and they're working out pretty good. They currently can output um, to RF power, so that's good. So that's right. They can um, you can hook a like coal generator from RF tools up to them, and they'll take energy from that, and then you can put it into an energy storage device from Tson Craft, and it will store it in there. So you can actually power Tson Craft machines using RF power so long as you use the energy pylons in order to do it. Uh, I believe the energy pylons only connect to solid blocks, so if you, for example, were using the Ender Iron conduits, I don't think that my pylons can connect directly to the conduits. However, they can connect to um, uh, like the capacitor banks from Ender Iron, probably. Assuming they implement the correct interface, which I hope they do. So that is the summary of those. They, they will allow you to convert between RF and Tson Craft Power with a conversion ratio of, I think it's RF, it's 4 RF to 1 Tson Craft Power, basically, um, is the current ratio. So the Tson Craft Power is about the same value as 1 EU from Industrial Craft, which I think in most cases is balanced to be 4, four um, RF to 1 EU, approximately. Um, so yeah, those, those are the energy pylons coming in, they're not too far off. The only current issue with them is they don't transmit power between each other yet, but they can actually pick up power and put it into other places, and work, which is nice. Yes, that's about it. So again, the main, main benefit of this update is to fix the problems I have with it, and to obviously make things look cooler, so obviously the new modeling stuff, uh, right about. You know, these sort of things are pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'm quite happy with how these have turned out, and I'm really excited to uh, continue to make more of these and make Tson Craft much nicer than it used to be. Because, uh, you know, it was pretty, pretty dull before, I suppose, except for the bright colors. But it was pretty simple in construct basis. You know, it was a fairly simple mod until I started messing with the tiling season tech stage when it sort of became kind of like other mods, I suppose, from my point of view. So, uh, 
yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this update video. I hope you guys are also excited for the future of Tison Craft. Um, it, it is a little while off before this update is released. It really depends how fast I get text stage working. Um, but there is a lot of good stuff on the way, and I hope you guys are excited for that. That's why I made these videos, because I want you guys to sort of understand the changes that will be potentially affecting you in your work in Tsun Craft. I would like to say that because this is a full rewrite, I can't guarantee that if you were to upgrade your world to this version, per se, well, okay, the version 3 when it comes out, I can't guarantee that all of your Tsun Craft blocks will stay in the world. I know that your um, the ores will, because I haven't changed their ID, and I haven't changed the ID of the carrots and potatoes, as you can see here. Because this is actually the same world that I did that original update video in. Just to point that out. Um, yeah, so this is the uh, current sort of system I'm working with here. So basically all the ore gen stuff will stay the same, but I can't guarantee that any of this stuff will be the same as it was before. I'm pretty sure most of it won't be. These probably will. No, these aren't even. These three are the same. So if you intend to upgrade from the version 2 or 1, if you're uh, still playing along for 8.9, uh, you may want to consider, you'll need to be aware of the fact that they'll need, if they're on a server, for example, you need to make sure that everyone is able to get hold of the new stuff to replace their old stuff with, because you, you, some of the IDs have changed, so some blocks will disappear in that case. But it's, it's mainly just cheap stuff, anyway. I'd imagine. I think most of the text age IDs are probably going to be the same, I think. I'll probably try and keep them as similar as possible. I've tried to do that so far, but I've, I've changed a few of them. Um, possibly not on purpose, but... Yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this update video. I hope you guys are excited for the future of t Craft 3, and uh, yeah, I, I do hope to make another one of these showing you the tech stage fairly soon and possibly finishing off the magic stage with uh, the rune, runic tiles and uh, a couple of other things that need to be dealt with and stuff like that. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.